Hi everyone, today we have Darren Burgess with us today, a current student at Launch School and is currently making his way through the front end courses. So thanks for agreeing to come on, Darren. You want to say hi real quick? Hi, everybody. So Darren has been with us at Launch School for about a year now, and he's been doing very well, And but it hasn't always been a smooth journey for him. So I wanted to invite him here today to share his experiences so far. His story is also quite interesting in that before he came to Launch School, he was a self-taught developer, and he even attended a different boot camp. So we'll get to that later. But first, uh, Darren, do you want to maybe just share a little bit about your background and how you got interested in programming and eventually how you got to Launch School? Yes, great question. So um, I actually already am employed as a developer. Um, I work for a company out of Oakland, California, I work remotely, and have been doing that for about five years. Now, uh, believe it or not, uh, Launch School is, is represents a career change for me. Um, currently, what I do is what's called a FileMaker Pro development, which is a Apple uh, relational database management uh, system. And uh, so I've been working with that for over 20 years. I kind of fell into it by accident, uh, you know, working at a job. They were using that tool and I started using it and then I started getting freelance clients. And then the freelance clients became more and more plentiful until the point where I needed felt like I was ready to jump into a consulting uh, job. So I got a job at a consulting company and have been doing that for five years now. Uh, I've been doing FileMaker for a really long time, though, and uh, it's kind of its own island unto itself. It's not really closely related to uh, web development in the sense that we understand it at launch school. And so I you know, was ready to kind of build a bridge to get off that island. Um, it turns out that the company I work for also has an entire web development team and one that is actually quite busy. Um, and so I have opportunities to jump over to that side, but I am not nearly uh, ready to do that. They, they only hire senior developers. So um, I have been, and they have been supporting me partially to go to school. Um, so I've been working for the last year, working through the curriculum at launch school in order to kind of get to that point where I could uh, build that bridge to get off of uh, FileMaker Island, so to speak. So it's a great it's a great job. Uh, I, I love working with clients, but the tools themselves, I've been working with them so long that I've, you know, frankly gotten uh, a little tired of them and uh, tired of the limitations that that platform has. Um, as good as it is, it has a certain limitations that make it really challenging to work with. So um, that's my background. It's kind of, uh, you know, before that I was, I was actually working as a admissions director and marketing director at a, at a, a well-known massage institute in, in Florida here and worked there for 15 years. And that's where I actually started to get my development experience. You know, before that I was a, a kid growing up in the 80s and, you know, we had TR City color computers and and, and things like that, that we, we played with when we were kids. So I've been doing software for a long time, uh, but kind of left it to do other careers. And then I'm now coming back to it. So I guess that's enough background. Yeah. And so you've been with us for a while over the last many months. I, we've had several conversations. I know that you have a, a music background. And I wonder if that has any bearing on why you chose Launch School. Is it because we, we tend to attract a lot of musicians and I guess programming in general tends to. Was there any sort of similarities as you went through launch school that you can extract from your music background? Well, you know, one of the things I understood about practicing music is that it, it requires a massive amount of repetition. Um, you know, there are times in my life where I would spend, you know, uh, eight hours a day just woodshedding scales and basic um basic foundational skills. Um, and uh, in particular, I got introduced to the learning style, the teaching and learning style that launch school, you know, that underpins the uh, launch school philosophy. And uh, by uh, when I started working with uh, a deep study of ear training, um, which, you know, requires just a massive amount of, it, of repetition. Um, over over a long extended period of time. So I studied your training for two years and and through that got a really great appreciation of how important it is to 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 do repetitive iterative study 
of a of a topic until it's fully mastered and memorized. Um, the notion being that if I'm going to memorize something, you have to constantly stick it into short term memory until it 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 sinks into long term memory, and that that takes a long time for that to happen. So um, when I got around to wanting to learn to program, um, you know, beyond FileMaker, I uh, first started off with a, a, a front end uh, mentored boot camp, and I studied that. I think I was with them for about about uh, three months or so, um, and that was a you know a project based. Uh, walk through HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, kind of maybe sort of culminating, I think, just with like jQuery and things like that. So I did a bunch of projects with that um, and then just sort of had moved on, had a break for a while, and then, you know, decided I really need to dig in because I could see that I wasn't really quite getting the results that I wanted from that. Like it wasn't resulting in, in significantly better opportunities to kind of get off the island, Bomber the Island. So... Um, that's when I started really researching schools, uh, you know, more serious boot camps. I looked at in-person boot camps. I looked at, um, uh, time limited boot camps, you know, 12 week, 16 week programs, things like that, full time online. Um, ultimately I had to decide, you know, that I had to do an online program because I have a family and, you know, teenagers and a life and financial responsibilities. So it had to be something that I did outside of my normal, uh, my regular life. Um, so, you know, I ended up with launch school because of the teaching philosophy, you know, was, was great in alignment with what I understood to be the best way to learn. Uh, and it was also a self-paced curriculum so that I did not have this looming deadline in order to like, okay, I got to be done with this thing in 12 weeks or whatever. I have a couple of questions here. The, yeah. I want to come back to this, um, your experience with this other boot camp, but First of all, I wanted to kind of dig a little deeper on your music background. Is why were you studying so seriously in in in, in your music? Were, were you <laughs> were you trying to be a professional musician, or obviously you were? It was more serious than just trying to mess around. Yeah, that's that's uh, there's uh, some funny stories and all of that. But uh, ultimately, what happened was I, I I got into jazz when I was in college, and uh, I was a biology major. So I was already a nerdy scientist, and so then I became a nerdy musician. And uh, I was not cut out for serious music study just because uh, I was too young and naive and didn't have enough background to really make it in the college environment. Um, and I'm sort of forgetting what your original question was. Can you try that again? Well, just why did you study music so intently and intensely? Why why were yeah. you not okay with just sort of yeah. just, just you know, at a superficial level? <laughs> That's a great question. You know, uh, me and my brothers and my dad are all like that. So maybe it's genetic. But like my dad is obsessed with bridge and uh, Texas No Hold'em online poker. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my brother is as well, my older brother, just, just obsessed with Texas No Hold'em. Uh, and that's from a gambling point of view, but from like a scientific, like, mm -hmm. how do you make money doing this as, a, as like a hobby? And... Uh, um, so, uh, we all do that. My, my younger brother, he's, you know, really into cycling and, uh, you know, road, ra road racing and, and cyclocross and, and things like that. And, uh, it's just like, we just do that. We just have this sort of creative drive to, uh, so to it wasn't good enough to just like play an instrument and just have fun on weekends. You really wanted to take it apart and learn it deeply. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So it, it, it kind of reminds me of this quote that I read somewhere and I forget who to attribute it to, but it almost sounds like, and this is how I'm going to bring it back to your experience at the other, at the other boot camp uh, that we shall not name. Uh, it, it, it seems like, and definitely correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't want to put words uh, to you, but it seems like because that you had studied music so deeply for so many years, that when you went to learn something new, you, you could feel that it wasn't very deep, right? You can, it, it's, it's what, what the quote I'm looking for is something like beginners, especially beginners who already are good at something, have been, ha, are, are an expert at something else at a different skill. 
they already have a taste for what that feels like, a deeper level of understanding. And so when they learn something new, there's this mismatch between what they can do versus what they know is that is a higher level of skill because they've tasted it in a different skill. I wonder if that's sort of, and again, I, I don't know if I'm making connections here that don't exist, but I wonder if that's how you felt or how did you know, for example, that the other boot camp you attended, you know, wasn't deep enough. Yeah, I don't know that we're going to be able to make that connection to the other boot camp, <laughs> okay. but, but certainly like the, um, the notion of like having been an expert at something already and then seeing this, this wonderful, like sort of creative world of, of software programming and having that not be, um, I could see that the, the only way that I could attain the, the expert was if I like sort of dove in and, and really, you know, iterated and iterated and iterated on the learning process in order to get to where I want to be. The other boot camp and probably a lot of sort of project based boot camps are like the the thing that you achieve is too easy, mm. you know, and it, and it's like, uh, OK, we get to the end and you produce this project. But and it, it may be almost like an illusion like that, that I, you achieve something. And certainly I've learned things there. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know that I spent enough time. I guess time. by this point, you were already a FileMaker Pro developer. And so you already had a sense for, you know, what is, what feels like full control and understanding of everything versus what is just kind of superficial generating, uh, applications, but underneath the hood, you have no idea what's going on. You already yeah. had that feeling. Yes, definitely. Okay. And I think, you know, what's true, like for a lot of musicians is that, uh, and I was no exception, is that as good as I am, it's never good enough. Mm -hmm. There's always another another level to achieve. And that, that drives a lot of creative people to mm -hmm. to improve. Probably drives some of them crazy, too. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, and it, it is, yeah, there's just this part of me that says, okay, I can, I can be better at this. Let me work on it. And the interesting thing is that, uh, it, like the creative outlook doesn't really matter in my life at all. Like what it is actually is the form of it doesn't matter. So like when, when I got into programming, music fell away. You know, I, I still pick up my guitar and play, but I, uh, you know, I don't need, I only need one creative outlet. I probably only have the energy and time for one. Mm -hmm. And so programming is that for me now. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it reminds me of the journey that you just kind of mentioned. It reminds me of how learning is, has different, phases to it and it's easy to conflate those different phases so what i mean is if you're learning something brand new for the very first time that's what i call the explore phase so there you're just kind of just getting your feet wet and trying to establish a mental model of how the entire what the entire ecosystem is in this in this new field in this new skill whether it's cooking or a music instrument or whatever or programming so it's not you're not ready to study yet. You're just kind of messing around and, and, and having fun. And people can spend years there. But the and, and that's where I think building projects is okay, right? It's it's well, they can also you know they can also spend years like you know watching YouTube videos and mm -hmm. uh, doing little exercises and you know kind of bumping from thing to thing and without really any kind of real clear direction, any clear structured direction. So, but in that phase, it's almost like it's okay because you're exploring right it yeah. you're, you're bouncing around and for example let's say music you don't even know what musical instrument you prefer you're that level of a beginner right so maybe try a bunch of things and see what you like um and then after you make a decision right it's like guitar i'm gonna just i'm gonna try to be a professional guitarist now or get really really good as in your case right just get get fanatically uh detailed with with this one instrument that's where you kind of switch out of that explore phase and into a more study oriented phase right and it requires a different type of attitude and a diff different type of learning and it's less about you know having fun but more about deconstructing the skill and trying to learn it really well and drilling and repetition that's where it kind of comes in and i feel like yeah for launch school i mean we're in that second study phase and some of these other boot camps might be in that first phase right and What's confusing, I think, nowadays is that software development skills are in demand across the board in that you can be in the explore phase and get paid, right? Maybe not a lot, but you can get paid. 
to yep. to do a little bit of work. So it's confusing because like here's a program to get a job, but yet you're you're only in the explore phase. You you haven't ever transitioned into the study phase. So yeah. so th- that's just a kind of a thought that you reminded me of. The next thing I want to talk about is the fact that you know you've been with us for a long time, and again I've I've talked to you you know uh, uh, throughout the time that you've been here, um, and I know that at least on a couple of occasions you you uh, debated about leaving law school, and and I see this as a not an uncommon thought. Do you want to maybe share your your process and uh, thought process uh, around that and how you're feeling now and I know yeah. we don't know what the future holds, but how you, how, what is your mindset today? Yeah, so um, this is uh, February 2017. So just to give that context. Um, so in December, I kind of was get. I guess I got to the end of uh, what, what's right before JavaScript is. Uh, the HTML, HTML, CSS? Yeah, so I just gotten to the end of that. And uh, usually what happens to me as I near the end of a segment is I start to get really sick of it. And uh, so there was that going on. You know, I'm, I'm approaching 50 uh, very soon in April. Um, and I, I, you know, was starting to get really doubtful that that uh, this uh, these efforts, which, you know, come at a lot of personal sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, my efforts to study are, are have to sacrifice a lot in order to do this. And... Uh, you know, it's like I'm 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 spending so much personal capital, not money. Mm-hmm. And uh, am I am I really going to get a return on that? I might, you know. So I was looking at how much time, much longer I'm going to work. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like, well, shit, I might only work another five years. Or I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, or I might only work in ten years. You know, um, and uh, maybe fifteen, uh, maybe twenty. I don't know. But I was thinking that I might retire early, and uh, why am I putting so much effort into this and sacrificing so much, um, you know, time with my family in particular, um, time with friends, my health? Um, why should I do? So? I mean, I could coast in, on Fine Micro Island for the rest of my career, no problem, make really good money. So I did a, a little lot of talking and sort of soul searching with my friends and. Um, you know, kind of got re in touch with why I started in the first place, you know, which was that it's that creative drive and that obsession to learn something that is like what drives me. Um, and so I also had a little, uh, little talking to you from Kevin, the other instructor and from you uh, earlier in the course. And what happened there was just really understanding or, or then reminding me that, uh, that I that I don't have to rush, you know. That I was feeling a lot of pressure, sort of, from my, my employer to keep moving and move faster and get to the point where I could contribute to the web team sooner. Um, and uh, kind of keep, I kept making progress in the course and and kind of seeing that I wasn't really there yet, you know, in terms of making a contribution. And they weren't ready to, um, you know, have me jump in as a junior and. and, and developer in, in, in any capacity. So once I let go of that idea that I had to finish by a certain time, man, it was a dramatic change. Uh, it was really interesting how that happened. I, I uh, it, it helped that it was at the end of the year and sort of like New Year's resolution kind of time. But, uh, you know, I got a Fitbit, you know, for Christmas. <laughs> I, I got uh, I got the little talking to from Kevin. I got, uh, you know, and talked to my friends and, and let go of this notion of rushing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then it's like, it, like, I, I can't get enough of it now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I don't have that sense of burnout, even though I've ramped up my, the time that I spend. Mm-hmm. And just to get some perspective, you've been with us for about a year and I would say yep. you're, you're, you're maybe what, 55, 60% of the curriculum. Yeah, I'm at, at 210 now, the, the first part of JavaScript. Yeah. So I guess that's, I have, probably have another 800 hours of like at least what the, the curriculum says it should take. Um, and and that could easily be another year, perhaps. You know, yeah, no, yeah, the end of this year easily. Yeah. Um, Are you so, okay with that? Is- yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, 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 I really am because, uh, you know, the thought at the end of last year was like, oh, crap, I spent a whole year of my life doing this. Right. And I only have 35 years left to live if I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, so the... The other thing I'm doing is timing. I started this when I first started Launch School, but I gave it up at some point, probably because of the tension around time. You know, it's like I was I was logging all of my time with a little time logger tool, mm -hmm. and uh, I think probably that that in, that tension around getting this done faster and then timing everything that I did was like just too painful. So, um, so then I, I got back. You know, the start of this year to timing everything that I do. Um, and I also got into like just like using every available moment, you know, that I have to uh, to study. And, you know, and that includes like listening to podcasts when I'm driving and um, watching videos uh, outside the launch school curriculum when I'm sitting and eating lunch or breakfast or just too tired to type code. You know, just trying to fill up as much time as I can. And I'm tracking all of that as well. So if I watch a video during lunch, I, I log that time. Yeah, and different advice for different people. And I think if that brings you tension, definitely don't do that, right? And I always tell people, you don't have to fill up every single free moment you have because consistency is more important than trying to work quickly, right? So if you say, hey, I'm okay working 15 hours a week and you hit that 15, like just stop, right? Like that's okay. And just, just stop for the week because- yeah next week you still got another 15 hours um or yeah. whatever the number is 20 hours but it's not good to jump from 15 then to 30 then to 15 then to 30 that brings a lot of i think um anxiety basically anytime you have to make a choice right and you're right this goes back to the idea of you're sacrificing a lot for the program and that it's almost like a just a spiral right going downwards in terms of negative thoughts where i feel like if you learn something well and i you know, I suspect this is why you have that tendency, like you said, almost genetically, where you want to study music, you want to study uh, programming so deeply, is that you're searching for a deeper level of satisfaction, right? And and I think, I think that's what any skill with depth brings, right? Is that there is a deeper level, level of satisfaction besides just a paycheck at the end of the day. If you know something well, you know, there's, there's, that's, that brings joy, right? That, that brings happiness. And I feel like if you can work through a program and learn to depth, that can bring you a deeper level of satisfaction and work at, at it consistently, it can actually help other parts of your life too, right? Because you have, you feel like you're, you're doing something worthwhile in itself, not that you're sacrificing uh, time away from, like I'm doing this really, you know, terrible, mindless task, yeah. right? And yeah. I'm sacrificing family time. That that will just spiral downwards. But if you feel like I'm doing work that is bringing me some joy uh, at a very deep level, well, when you go back to your family and friends, they, don't, they notice a change. They notice that all of a sudden you seem a little bit more balanced, right? Yeah. Uh, instead of hectic. So... Yeah, I have some thoughts on that too. It's like my... Uh... So before I became a developer, a file maker pro developer full time, I, I worked at this massage school, and uh, I mentioned that before. And I did massage therapy too. And you know, my motivation for doing massage therapy was about helping people. And uh, you know, you talk about joy; it's like getting that that joy from taking somebody who's broken and um, helping them feel just a little bit less broken. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know that when I became a full-time software developer, like that, that motivation didn't change at all. Um, you know, it's like I'm using my creativity to help people that uh, are suffering in some way, you know, dealing with some broken system, <laughs> whether it's their muscle in their leg or whether it's you know their um, their their workflow in their job. Um, that that creates suffering it doesn't really matter to me. So I think that's the thread that that. Uh, bring some continuity to my work and service uh, in the world um, is that, and also teaching too, like I taught a lot at the school as well. And that reminds me of the idea of not having to wait till the end, right? And so the, the, 
the the reason why maybe you thought about leaving law school is because really there's nothing holding you here. We're, we're, you're not a junior in college where you would say, okay, let me just stick it out another year, get my degree, and it's mm-hmm. worth in the long run. I feel like at a program at law school, the flexible flexible pay, payment structure is both a pro and a con. It's pro, obviously, because it's flexible. It's a con in that every single month you get to choose, right? And almost making that choice is... Is, is kind of painful sometimes. It induces stress, right? And, yeah. um, but it's not that you have to wait till the end of the journey to see, you know, to bear the fruits of, of your journey. Is that each step of the way, you can actually turn around and do something. And if you remove the time frame, right, where you're just putting your head down, trying to rush through it, you can actually turn around and do stuff, right? Work on projects or help people who are earlier in their program um, and and there's no better way to learn to death than than to teach, right? Yeah, well, that's the other thing that too that happened once I let go of the time frame and started to relax a little bit more. My uh, sense of uh, generosity um, became unlocked. You know, like if I, when I was freaking out about the time frame, um, and actually freaking out in a really unconscious way. I didn't really know that it was the case. It took you and Kevin to point it out. You know. Um, but once I let go of that, you know, now I'm kind of participating more in the different things in the school. Um, so I, I might be starting to meet with some other some of the earlier students um, to help them yeah. with their assessments and things like that. So uh, finding ways that I, I enjoy, um, things that I enjoy doing, you know. Right. I think that's an amazing observation that once you remove the time frame, not only are you able to learn with yeah. more balance, with more joy, but then it also, as you said, unlocks generosity. And that, again, has dual purpose, right? One is that it, when you teach, in our, in our in, in programming, generosity usually means helping other people, right? When you look at other people's code or when you teach, it actually helps you learn a lot to, to a lot more depth. And, and also, yeah. it brings, like, as you said, for, for same thing with massage therapy, right? There's a sense of satisfaction when you help somebody. So yeah. um, that is a, a really, really good observation and, and something I, I haven't thought about before. But um, uh, I think that's, that's right on. I always encourage people to you know, do code reviews and, and uh, help others, not yeah. because you know, we're, we're looking for free labor at law school, but because it is truly the best way to learn is turn around and teach and explain it to other people. Yeah, well, I'm finding other ways to contribute too. Like, uh, I discovered that it's like ridiculously easy to contribute to uh, Mozilla Developers Network, mm-hmm. and uh, so I've I've contributed a few things on the wiki pages there and some of the JavaScript documentation, um, and they're relatively small things, but um, like I had to really dig into that documentation to solve a problem in the lunch school curriculum. And then that allowed me to see, oh, there's a mistake here. Let me fix that. And, uh, well, and then, you know, you know, I'm not just going to fix it half, half baked. You know, I had to really think about the fix. And, uh, and so that made me think really about the particular method page, wiki page that I was working on. Um, I think, MDN accepts everything you you submit. I don't, I'm, I'm not even sure that there's people reviewing the changes because um, they get accepted really quickly. So um, anyway, that was a re- that's a really easy way to contribute. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly right. In that you you don't have to wait until some you know final moment. I get so many people asking me when you know when can I be ready to do something impressive? When can I be ready to you know do this or that? And the answer really is if you learn to adapt each step of the way, you can, whether it's, you know, helping somebody else or as you as you found, contributing to documentation or whatever it is, right? You you can turn around and apply that knowledge. But the key thing is you can't have a superficial understanding of that topic, right? It has to be too depth. So last couple of questions here as uh, as someone who's been around law school for a while now, do you have any advice for let's say prospective programmers, not necessarily in launch school, but just in general, who are learning, who are trying to learn a program? Yeah, I would say um, take notes and then take notes of your notes. And, <laughs> and 
Yeah, that that's really, especially when going through the law school curriculum. Um, you know, when I I didn't do that as much in the first year, so now that that's what I've been doing is is basically rewriting the entire curriculum in in sort of bullet <laughs> form, um, right. and uh, that that has been really useful in terms of knowledge retention. I just think it's really important. The other thing that's really important is just to blab out loud. Um, you know, I mean, you do that in the assessments, but that shouldn't be the only time that right. I spend, you know, blabbing. So when my t- family will tolerate it, I will uh, blab to them or talk to them about programming problems, Right. walk through a particular problem. My younger son especially is, is uh, you know. Really well versed in Ruby and JavaScript now or? Uh, well, you know, I had a whole conversation about JavaScript the other day with him. And he was like really nailing it. Um, <laughs> he's a pretty smart kid, and he's done some JavaScript uh, summer camp stuff. And uh, so, um, and he, he still thinks his dad is cool, whereas his older brother is seventeen and thinks his dad is a complete dork. But <laughs> um, so. Uh, uh, I forgot what we were talking so about. So take but, notes yeah. and and take and, notes, and add, I, lab. yeah, and talk out loud and and yeah. I would just say don't be okay with reading notes that other people created because it's really not about that. It's not about consuming more notes. Yeah, yeah and one really good example of that is not just notes, but like all the YouTube content that's out there. Mm-hmm. And there's there's some really good content and there's some really not so good content, but um, like. What the common denominator of all that YouTube content is a lot of those guys are professional developers um, and they're they are able to sit down and make a video and articulate everything that they're talking about. Um, so that might be, you know, if you're into video, that would be a thing to do, too. You know, it's like just make even if it's just like quick time videos that you save on your own desktop is like, you know, work, take take a problem and create a quick time video. Mm-hmm. Uh, you learn and then listen to it. Yeah, that's one of the things when you do study music which can be really hard to do because of how much it reveals is to record myself playing. Um, and, uh, you, you hear it in a different context, you know, a different light, um, taking it out of sort of the real time creation and putting it into a recording. Um, you can, I, I could see that the mistakes I made, I could see, uh, the, the the habits, the sort of the bad habits I get into with music, um, the repetitive sort of boring stuff, you know, that I that I just regurgitate because uh, because it's it's easily accessible. Um, so yeah, do video. I haven't I haven't done videos, but I think I might try it. I might yeah. even do a YouTube channel just to like go a step further. Yeah, I think anytime you're forced to articulate yourself, whether it's through a blog entry or a, a video. Um, it really challenges your understanding and forces clarity out of you. Uh, and, and, and I think that is a, a, a really, really important exercise. And yeah. So um, I think that's all the questions I had today, Darren. Thanks for spending the time, Darren. Really appreciate it. I think people will get a lot out of what you've said and sharing your story. So thanks a lot. Yep, great. Thank you so much.